Welcome to the shooting show. This week, Red and his pal Eden are decoying wood pigeons in Angus. Plus, we're back in the Emerald Isle, visiting David Dunn, chairman of the Wild Deer Association of Ireland. Byron shooting buddy Aidan Alland and his friend Stuart are out in the fields looking for pigeon activity. The farmer has instructed Aidan and Stuart to stop the pigeons raiding a freshly cut rape field and early indications are that there will be plenty of birds to fend off. Choosing a suitable location the boys set about building their hide. They quickly get one up using telescopic poles, camo netting and the natural camouflage afforded by the cut rape. With the hide established, it's time to draw the pigeons in. There's a wide range of options here and the shooters opt for traditional decoys, a pigeon magnet and a rather innovative flapper device. With birds already flighting in overhead, it's time to get settled into the hide and begin the shooting. It doesn't take long for the action to begin, but both guns miss their first shots and the pigeons escape unscathed. Your best not jumping up and rushing, just yeah. come up slowly and let them come in. You just get them smoothly. Yeah. Because as soon as they see you jumping about, they just flare well, away exactly. off. Exactly, just shot off that other opposite direction, there, didn't you? It just depends. Sometimes, sometimes they catch you by surprise and you, you can't help yourself. But one, two, over. However, the pigeons soon begin to drop in with regularity as both shooters fall into a great rhythm and the turtle begins to mount. Oh. That would have been a good one to have on camera. Part of the success is down to the pigeon flapper. Stuart tells Aidan about his latest acquisition. I think it's meant to work really good in like the stubbles and there's days that they want like the or lane, you want a bit of movement to flap or a good bit. If you stand from a distance and watch it, it looks really realistic. Yeah. There you go. No. Oh, well done. Give us a shout when you're coming back over then. That's Stuart away to the adjacent rape field to keep the birds on the move because we can see a couple of power lines over there and there's about 30 birds sitting on top of them so if we can keep them moving between the two fields hopefully we'll bag a few more. There's a few more coming in there. So. They're also coming in from behind us. Which isn't great because we can't see behind us that well. There's one in the field. Oh. Don't know how he got there. Just been on the phone to Byron and I uh, told him to come along because there's quite a lot of pigeons floating between the two hides we've got here so he should be arriving any minute really. Byron who's been stuck in the office all day tears himself away from the desk for some late afternoon shooting but Eden is still happily plugging away while he awaits yes. Red's arrival. All right Eden. All right Byron. How have you been getting on? Not too bad. Uh, What's the bag like? Uh, well I've just been off on the phone to Stuart He's in a field just over there, and he said that he'd bagged about 30 or so, so we must be hitting about the 60 mark between the two of us. Have they been coming in steady, or...? Yeah, there's a bit of a lull around about one o'clock or so. What's that? Quarter to three? So, 
Well, I hope I haven't come out here for nothing. I hope I managed <laughs> to shoot a few pigeons before I go home. Well, don't know. Don't know with your shooting how much you'll get. <laughs> but no, there's been a few bangs anyway. And it's definitely the most activity I've seen in a while. Good, good. Well, let's see how we get on. Yeah, definitely. I'll take the one on the left. With Red and Aiden in the hide, there's some top shooting and some banter to match. Thank you, kind see, sir. See how you get on with a decent gun. <laughs> Eden, those clouds are looking pretty gloomy to me. Yeah, those rumbles of thunder uh, are not sounding promising. Uh, I've had a pretty good afternoon. Yeah. I think it'd probably be a good move to call it a day before we get soaking wet. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Got a few in the bag, so happy days. Yeah, I mean, what do you think the, the final count was? I think we'll be near the 70 mark or so. Including Stuart? Oh, including Stuart, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll give Stuart a call, tell him we're going to wrap it up, and uh, let's head home yeah. before the rain comes. Definitely. <laughs> it's been a successful day. The farmer will be pleased that his fields have been well protected from marauding pigeons, and all that is left to do now is to pick up the fallen birds before the skies open. Two young Jacobites there showing us how to shoot wood pigeons. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. After months of uncertainty, the way is finally clear for badger culls to begin in two areas in southwest England. Last Tuesday, the Court of Appeal unanimously rejected the Badger Trust's challenge to the cull. Reports were that the court would reserve judgment, delaying the start of the cull for weeks, but the decision means that culling can begin as soon as Natural England issues licences. Basque has announced that it has recently held a meeting with Ofcom, the independent regulator and competition authority, regarding Royal Mail's proposal to stop carrying guns and their component parts. The meeting was intended to discuss the impact of the proposals on the gun trade, as Basque had found that Royal Mail's proposals were flawed, legally incorrect and not evidence-based. Ofcom, as the regulator and competition authority for the UK communications industry, has the power to overrule Royal Mail's decision. George Digweed took his 20th world title at the World Compact this weekend. Digweed dropped one on the first day, but remained straight on the second to card 199x200. Junior Marco Battisti of Italy was runner-up, just one target behind on 198. Cheryl Hall continued the British reign in the ladies, scoring 193 to take her 23rd world title. Cheryl also became the first woman to shoot as a senior at a World Cup event and finished ninth overall. The League Against Cruel Sports former head of communications, Steve Taylor, has been jailed for 16 months. Taylor pleaded guilty to fraud after using a League credit card more than 300 times to pay for travel, food and personal goods. He even used it to pay for a leaving gift for retiring Chief Executive Douglas Batchelor, pocketing the cash his co-workers had raised. Andrew Jude took the title at the English Sporting Home International last weekend. Jude's 88x100 helped the England seniors to the team victory, with a combined score of 850x900 ahead of Northern Ireland's 785. England made a clean sweep of the team titles, winning the ladies with 150x200, the juniors with 162x200 and the veterans also with 162. That was the Shooting Show News. While in Ireland recently at the Borough Castle Game Fair, I caught up with David Dunn, Chairman of the Wild Deer Association of Ireland. I was keen to find out about the organisation, as well as David's own stalking preferences. David, can you tell us exactly uh, what the Wild Deer Association of Ireland is all about? Uh, the Wild Deer Association of Ireland is about the conservation of our national wild, wild deer herds. And um, we also run events to promote the safe handling of venison and also safety aspects in the field. Our main object objectives is to educate people in the right way of going about uh, deer stalking and to approach it with the right attitude. That's what we hope to do at the Wild Deer Association of Ireland. And you run uh, carcass handling courses a couple of times throughout the year. What, what do those involve? We introduce people to the proper uh, approach to carcass handling 
the, the skinning of the deer, how to break down the deer properly. On the day we also do have um, a vet in and the vet goes through all aspects of dealing with um, carcasses and how they should be checked for diseases such as TB and other diseases that could be present in wild deer. And so we have a vet on site on that day. We also have a, a professional butcher going through the skinning and carcass preparation. And we also have other things on the day. We usually have someone in about, which is a big interest over here at the moment, is uh, dog breeds, especially the tracking dogs. Uh, and that there's a huge interest in that at the moment. So we're, we're promoting that over here as well. Poaching is a massive problem in Ireland. Can you tell me why that is and what the association is doing to try and uh, prevent it and curtail the poaching that's going on? The poaching has become a massive problem uh, over here at the moment, especially the commercial taking of deer. It's just part of the economy, the economy being so bad, the deer are being looked at as a, a quick cash asset. So what's happening is commercial groups in, in organised numbers are going out on a night with lamps and taking large amounts of deer from, from areas. And this, and this has got totally out of hand. We have a campaign going at the moment, Shine the Light on Poaching, and which we have a dial-in where people can report rural crimes such as poaching and illegal taking of wild deer which which um, is being dealt with by the courts and there is successful prosecutions against these people but we reckon we're only at the tip of the iceberg here the, the poaching in some areas has totally decimated deer stocks some areas are down at maybe 80 percent on what their deer stocks were there up to five years ago you're very well known for showing your skill with a knife on camera. Uh, can you tell us what uh, things do you need to look for in a blade for carcass preparation? Well, my knife background comes from being, I'm 27 years as a professional uh, butcher and I'm working in the meat industry that long. And if, if I was choosing a knife for field, the field, most, you don't need a big knife for the field. A knife with about a four inch blade and a high quality steel, something about 420, 440, AUS 8, something of that kind of steel would be, would be a, very, a very good blade to have. And the handle, whereas some knives might look pretty, I, I always go for a non-slip type of a handle and a good leather sheet. I prefer a fixed blade knife as I find it safer, and that, especially with a non-slip handle. What are the tools of your trade? What rifles do you use? What calibers are they in? Uh, one of my favourite makes of uh, rifles is definitely the Sacco. I'm a big fan of Sacco and have been shooting them for quite a long time. And uh, I have a Sacco in 6555, but this year I've gone down the custom route and I'm getting a custom rifle built. I'm getting a, a Macmillan stock with a bat machine action and a 26 inch Krieger barrel and a dual trigger and this will be kind of a dual purpose gun to me. I'll use it in both rifle competition and I'll also use it as a stalking rifle and that uh, because I'm getting it in light varmint profile so it should be a really nice rifle and I'm looking forward to receiving it. So of all the deer species that you hunt which is your favourite? Uh, my favourite deer species to hunt has to be the Sika. I really enjoy stalking because they're the most challenging of all our deer species to stalk and especially October, I definitely, October is my time to be out in the field stalking Sika. And that when you, once you hear the tree whistles, and that it really puts the hair up on the back of your neck. And I, I really enjoy uh, Sika stalking. That was, that's definitely my favorite. It's clear that Ireland's deer still face many challenges, but thankfully the Wild Deer Association is at the forefront of the battle to secure their future. Thanks for watching. That's it for this week. We're out every Monday, 7.30pm UK time. This is The Shooting Show.